Drawing and creating shadows and highlights is the trickiest part of mock-up creation. They can dramatically increase the realism of a mock-up if used correctly. When there are highlights, there are also shadows. Highlights may be small, like little glares on the screen. They could be a thin line indicating where a light source is coming in from the side. Highlights and shadows can be simple or com complex, depending on the light source. First of all, we have a direct light source. This light source is common when you're outside on a sunny day without any clouds, or when you shine unfiltered light right onto an object. This casts sharp shadows without any blurring. They're intense and have zero fading. It's either there or not there. Direct lighting can be helpful in situations where your object will be shown outside on a sunny day or if you want to have clean, sharp edges to your shadows. The more popular shadow type you see in mock-ups is indirect light. This light is muffled by an object somehow, so the light is no longer direct. You see this in photo box setups all the time where you can cover your light source with a filter. Indirect light sources can be light from a lamp with a shade, or inside, or on a cloudy day outside. If there's anything between the object and the direct light source, it can change the appearance of the shadows. For instance, this styrofoam cup. This was taken on my covered back porch with indirect light coming from the sides of the porch. You'll notice how the shadow tends to feel blurry or softened. It tends to have darker shadows toward the bottom of the cup and it radiates outwards and slowly loses its intensity. When we draw our own shadows for mock-ups, we need to study these effects. And after this lesson, I want you to study shadows on everyday objects in your house. What does the shadow look like on a bright sunny day outside? What does that same object look like in your bedroom? What does it look like with multiple light sources, like a living room with more than one lamp? Once you start to study shadows and highlights, you'll learn how they're cast. You always need to figure out where your light sources are and commit to that light source throughout the creation of your mock-up. This means if shadows are cast to the right, then the light source must be coming from the opposite side. That means shadows will never be drawn or casted to the left throughout the mock-up. And the same goes for highlights. With multiple light sources, it does get a little bit more complicated. In this mock-up of a cardboard box, you'll notice a thin line of highlights at the top left of the box. This is because the light source is coming from the upper left, and you'll notice the entire right side is covered in a dark shadow. That's because the light source is being completely blocked by the left side of the box. You will also notice a thin shadow line on the highlighted side of the box. This is because the box slightly curves at the bottom, and because of that curve, it casts a small thin shadow right underneath, even though it's on the highlight or the light side of the box. So study those little details, and they make huge differences in creating that sense of realism. A popular lighting theme you see in mock-ups these days is showing a direct light source right on top of the object. This poster has a window as its main light source and cast it directly on top, creating an interesting effect. You can see it here in the examples. It has a super modern appearance as it embraces the light source and makes it a part of the visual experience. Highlights can look different based on the material of the object too. This milk bottle is made of glass, so it reflects the light source. You can almost make out the window pane in the glass. You can also see the glass cup reflected in the picture as well. And this is easy to create using 3D programs like Adobe Dimensions, Cinema 4D, and Blender. Uh, very difficult to create this by hand, but it is possible if you become a highlight and shadow master. Shadows also give away an object's position relative to each other. Bringing this cast shadow of a business card further away from the card adds more distance to the object from the letterhead below. You can give an almost stacked appearance to objects by adjusting their shadows as such. Shadows that are closer to an object make them appear close to the background. There are also shadows that move closer and further away from an object that indicate distance from the background or a table. This mask string has a shadow that pulls away slightly here, indicating that that portion of the string is higher up than the rest of the string. This seems like tiny little details, but it's those attention to details that make your mock-up shine. Highlights can be added to an object for a curved appearance. Without highlights, this album cover looks super flat. 
although we know it has to fit a record inside, so it cannot truly be totally flat. So to add that little bit of dimension to the album, we'll add a sliver of highlights to make it feel more rounded. Also with shadows, you'll notice this has a soft light source, but you also see several layers of shadow intensities. One layer of shadows is very dark and intense right next to the album, and it slowly gets lighter as you move away from the album. This paper curls slightly upward on the upper left-hand side. Notice how the shadow changes there? It extends further out from the other shadows cast from the more even side of the paper. Back to adding rounded elements to objects, this 3D custom mock-up has a thin, darker black shadow cast across the top to give the appearance of the box folding down onto the top to create the box flap. You will notice a very thin white line around the box to indicate where the light source just gracefully catches the edges. You'll see the sharp shadow cast to the left indicating a direct light source. Here are some 3D cans created in Adobe Dimensions. Once again, you can see that darker shadow right below the object and the lighter shadow moving away from the object. This would be an indirect light source. You can see the blurred highlights on the can also indicating an indirect light source. You can also see two highlight points here that indicate curves on the top of the can. In a lot of cases, super complex, hyper-realistic shadows can be achieved by taking a real-life photo of the object. In this case, I took a photo of one of my kid's breakfast bars. I was able to trace over the highlights and shadows to create my own box on top. Once I added texture and a logo, I was ready to go. I had some wonderful built-in shadows from my photo I left untouched. Hand drawing those shadows would have been really tough because of the soft blurring effect. Sometimes just using a photo just makes it a little bit easier. You can also use 3D tools like Adobe Dimensions to set your shadows and highlights too on products. This does require having a stock 3D model or the exact object you want to use. If you're putting together a design an object that is very common, like t-shirts, this should not be an issue, for as the software comes with several stock 3D objects like that. You can study light and shadows in any 3D program, plug in an object and change the lighting source and direction to see how it behaves. Creating realistic shadows and highlights takes time to master, something I hope you really get comfortable with throughout the rest of this course.